Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I'm Mike Musto. I'm here with Dylan McCool. We're at Mopar, Holly Mopar, which one is probably one of the coolest Mopar events that I've been to today. Yeah, I can say that for sure. That is a guarantee. Absolutely. So what, what are we doing here today? What, what do we, what's the goal? So today there are so many cars here, so many different kind of genres of cars that we want to see everything. So we're going to go take a walk around and just look at some things that we think are really interesting and some cars that we like and show them to you. Yeah, now our tastes might be a little different than your taste, but the good part about this event is there is there is a Chrysler Mopar something for everybody, and I think our goal will be to find it. Absolutely. So let's go check out some cars. Let's do it. All right, so Dylan and I are walking around and we came upon this. And this is the, this is like the the perfect example of like the barn find that you would always want to find, right? You know, 71 Demon, original paint, original everything. The epitome of what like a 70s drag car slash, you know, like street racer would look like. I'm, I was blown away when I saw this thing. Yes, this car is something else. He's even got a picture right here of this car at this racetrack in 1973, signed by the guy who built it right there. So, a lot of stuff is amazing about this car. He said that, in fact, this thing was acid dipped years ago, and you can see where the, the foam on the backing because he said the, the metal panels would get so flimsy they sprayed foam on the inside so that way it could hold together but I mean this is a serious race car right here it is it, it's cool and the cool part was like this these are the race cars that I remember as a kid you don't remember as a kid because you weren't there <laughs> I was I have to think yeah um, but this is when I think of like drag strip car like local drag this is what I would think of fat tire pizza cutters in the front just rumbling whole car shaking it's just I like I would love to own something like this, but it would it would always have to stay like this. You right. couldn't change it. No, on the absolutely. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's just so it's so wicked. Yeah, it even has the old screaming demon on the on the door here. I, I love the way that it looks. It's got the the matching color, match interior. And it's all original. Everything in here, even down to like the gear driven tack in there. I mean, it's all cable driven. It's it's amazing. This yeah. stuff is just it's stuff that you can't find hardly anymore. And to see something like this preserved for so long, it just it warms my heart to know that there's something out here anywhere i mean you can find this stuff you just have to look for it and yeah. this guy looked up on it and found it and gives me hope to find something else well if you <laughs> if you look if you look into the interior you got to get b-roll in the interior for everybody to see even the roll hoop in the back like the back seat they've actually caught, carved out the back seat for the roll cage to go down into and it's just stuff you don't see anymore today the back seat would be gone right right but the fact that it has the high back seats, the pipe, the white piping on it, it's just such a period drink. It's just cool, man. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just cool. So this is, a uh, what year is this? It's the late 70s. 70s. Yeah. Now this car is one of the, the few that are kind of in the late era of Mopars where they don't really get as much love. We've got three right here that we're yeah. going to talk about, but they don't really see as much of the appreciation that you see from Kudas and Challengers, Darts, but there's still a market out there for these cars, and this one has a pretty good story for them. It, it does. Last, I believe it was last year, he, this gentleman had one that got T-boned, totally wiped out, and he put this together to basically bring this car to Mo Party, which was really, really cool. And it's, you know, it's not a flavor that everybody's going to like, but it is a cool car. I mean, it is one of the last kind of, you know, big coupes that the Chrysler Corporation made. Um, there are people that have a soft spot for these. The, the nice part is, in Stockholm, they're actually really nice cruisers. Yes. Like, you can get up, you can drive them for a couple hundred miles, you don't get fatigued out of them, which is exactly what they were built to do right. when they were new. Right. Right? So, I can appreciate it. I absolutely can. Might not be my taste, but I dig it. I like yes. what he did. God bless him for getting everything we got <laughs> together and getting into the show. You can't yeah. fault anybody for doing that. It's awesome to see. Yeah, and that's the whole thing about it this stuff is I like to see stuff driven no matter yeah. what it is you know and if you have that desire and that taste for a car then get out and drive it yeah that's what's cool about this Aspen over here this is a it's an RT correct this is an Aspen RT now you know the Aspen's a, basically Aspen Blare they were all pretty much the same and these cars when they came out they were kind of like the last bastion of yeah somewhat performance right it was more stickers right but they're actually pretty cool looking cars. Now, they also made these for the Richard Petty package where yes. you get the number 43 on the side, they came in blue and red. I am, I'm a huge fan I of agree. those cars. I agree, Right? The big flares, it just, it's all, it screams seven. It, it absolutely. It screams seven. Yeah, and then the cool part about it is, 
if you you might not like this particular one but there were versions of this car that are fantastic so just because you see something like this or, or you might love this and be like i hate the petty cars or whatever the case is the cool part is there are different versions that absolutely enthusiasts can gravitate to and really enjoy and those petty cars they've really started to become a collector item oh yes yeah. it's, it's amazing how something like that that was just kind of a, a sticker package at that point really has come around to be something that people really want absolutely and i mean the petty cars I like because they were they were literally bolt-on flares. Yes. They were eight-inch wheels all around, which for back in the day was pretty big. Yes. Um, you know the decals came separately, like the forty-three. So they didn't come from the dealer like that. They actually gave you the decals and you could put them on. Yeah. If you didn't want. Came them. in the trunk. Came in the trunk. Yeah, That's right. In the trunk. Um, but yeah, cool cars nonetheless. Very very Absolutely. very cool. I am a little bit partial to Cordobas. I've I got. Know, a I know you got a couple. I've got a yeah. couple, so yeah. I am a little partial to these. But it is neat to see kind of a, the last hurrah for the 300 yeah. up until the early 2000s yeah. so no it's it's a neat car it's a neat car the fact that it still exists and it wasn't converted to a derby car it wasn't right. destroyed it wasn't just beat on by teenagers and thrown away right. the fact that it's here is fantastic absolutely yeah. and driven here nonetheless yeah no good car this body style was cordoba 300 magnum like I'm not a massive 300 or Cordoba fan, but I'm a huge Magnum fan. Right. And so, and it's just, there was that flavor for right. everybody, which I really have. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm happy that Chrysler did that back in the day. And that's kind of what they did with, like, Chargers, Roadrunners. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's all structurally the, the same, same car, but you can have whatever you want. Yeah. You know, make your own little package deal. If, you, if you're a Dodge fan, a Plymouth fan, whatever right. you want, you can have whatever you want these days. We found this 69 Charger 500 that honestly looks like it's been sitting for, I have no idea, it says it's 47 years and the way it looks, I believe it. This car, it says it's a, got the original engine in it, a 456 Dana. So this car is pretty much top of the line for what it was. For back in the day, this is, I mean, for a 69 500, this one looks like it's been underwater for 47 years, right? This is like the SpongeBob edition of the Charger 500. <laughs> and it's, to see it like this, it's it's mildly heartbreaking, but in the same right. token, there's someone out there that's going to look at this and go, you know what, I can replace those fenders, I can, I can repair the rust. As long as the VIN numbers are all there, this will always be a Charger 500. It will always be a very rare car, a very valuable car. Right. Right, but you have to have that vision. Right, and, the, and there's the, the way, there's two different ways you can go about this. You could either do that, you know, go ahead and spend the money, mm -hmm. get this thing to yeah. basically where you want it to be, restored completely, and that's the only time I've ever seen a Charger 500 that's restored. Or drop an engine in it or get the one rebuilt. Yeah. Drive it as is, even with the duct tape back window. I don't, in it. Dude, that would be a toll. I was looking at this. This is wild. This is pretty wild. So, I, so there are certain things like if you look at. I have never seen a truck separate into yes. three different layers pretty before. Bad. So there's pretty bad. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Yes. But the fact that it is a Charger 500, the fact that it is such a rare car, the fact that somebody saw it, decided to pull it out, decided to salvage it, is pretty impressive. And it's. Um, Part of me would almost like to take a million photos of this, restore it, and then have a wrap done. Right, to make it look, and exactly, make it look like exactly like it was, but with solid that. metal. I mean, if this car was solid underneath, I would love to kind of do a, a work on it as you go kind of thing. Oh, sure. Get it to run, get oh, it yeah. to drive mechanically, yep. and then start fixing the things that are really, really bad. Yeah. Because it took 47 years to look like this, and it would be hard pressed for me to do something to, to change that. But man, this car would be the perfect candidate to, to document the story, yes. where it sat. Yeah. I mean, it's been off the road longer than it ever even was a car. It was on a car, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's amazing to see something like this out here. Yeah. No, this is this is slick. This is slick. This is one of those things where if I saw it, I'd be like, all right, now i got to find the owner. And I should probably <laughs> buy it, and somebody's going to get mad at me, and when I get home, I'm going to drive it home, but right. it's cool. Absolutely. It's a slick car. So, Dodge trucks, really hot right now. Everybody's wanting one because that's kind of like the, the entryway into the Mopar world. And we've got a really good example behind us for something that is really kind of out of this world as far as what it is. It seems like a pretty original truck, big block, got a big camper in it so you can take the whole family with you. So you got to really appreciate something like this to hit the open road and, and use it for what it's worth. This is a 1970, I believe, right? So the fact that it's obviously it's been restored, the camper looks like, if that's original inside, I'd be shot. But if it is, well done. Um, but big block, 440 truck. Um, when you look at these things now, you're like, this is sketchy as all hell, <laughs> right? Because the camper is literally held on, you've got these two chains. Like, you're going, that's probably not safe. And honestly, it's probably not safe. But in 1970, 
this is what you had. And the thing is, if I saw this today and it was for sale, I'd probably end up buying it and be like, okay, right. where are we going? This go, is cool. Go get a campfire going. And, yeah. That's just it. And you do it, stuff like this is all for the experience. And the nice cool part about like coming to an event like Mopar Party is you see stuff like this that you would see nowhere else. Right. And I think that to the owners who restored this thing and that have cared for it and brought it back to life, it's great because they did such a beautiful job on it. Um, I just, it's just cool, man. Absolutely. And that's what's cool about things like this. You know, these cars are kind of like an expression of ourselves. And we're trying to kind of chase a, an, an era, basically. This truck right here is straight 70s. And that's what you did. This is what you had. And like you said, Moparty has everything you'd want from Hemi swaps to brand new, everything like just a modern suspension, modern drivetrain to an all original camper truck. I mean, we're chasing a feeling, we're chasing, you know, a mindset. And that's what Moparty has. You can get a little taste of everything. Yeah. And I think one thing also, if you're a Moparty guy, and Dylan and I, we can both relate to this, don't be afraid to upgrade. Don't be afraid to swap. You've got a Gen 3 Hemi, I'm putting one of my cars. If you want to keep, you know, traditional big and small black power, more power to you, but we will tell you, I think from experience, upgrading is not a terrible thing. You can always like the numbers matching stuff, but fuel injected, Gen 3 Hemi, air conditioning, it's kind of nice. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's cool about Mo Party, you got something for everybody here.